Hi guys, Arindam here. And in the third part of my museum series, I will be taking a look at all the reptiles and amphibians present in the Ark Survival Evolved game. So, let us begin. Now, reptiles and amphibians have been denoted by the green color because they were mostly, if you look at it, they are mostly green and shades of green and used to live in, you know, marshy, swampy and other terrestrial things. You won't, you will rarely find colors that are something other than green. Maybe snakes will have varied colors, but, but it's mostly green. So, let us begin. The first creature is called the Bilzi Bufo or the Giant Frog. Now, Bilzi Bufo and Pingna, am, sorry, Bilzi Bufo and, okay, let me rephrase this. Bilzi Bufo and Ampinga was a large species of prehistoric frog dating from the late Cretaceous period, 70 million years ago. They were at least 23.2 centimeters long, which is around the size of a modern African bullfrog, and their head were very big. Bilzibufo was most likely a predator whose expansive mouth allowed it to eat relatively large prey, perhaps even juvenile dinosaurs. Now, the bite force of a large Bilzibufo with a skull width of 15.4 cm may have been between 500 and 2200 Newton, which for a frog is very, very high. Next up, we have the Carbonemis. Carbonemis cofrini is an extinct podocnemidid turtle known from the middle Paleocene Kerejon formation of the Caesar Rancheria Basin in northeastern Colombia. This formation is dated at around 60 to 57 million years ago, starting at about 5 million years after the KT extinction event. The holotype specimen had a shell that measured about 1.72 meters long, making it one of the largest turtles. Now the jaws, the jaws of Carbonemis were massive and would be powerful enough to eat crocodilians that were abundant in the first neotropical forest of the Carajon formation. This turtle coexisted with the giant boaite constrictor which we know as Titanoboa. Next we have the Dimorphodon. Now, Dimorphodon was a genus of medium-sized pterosaur from the early Jurassic period. Dimorphodon means two-formed tooth, referring to the fact that it had two distinct types of tooth in its jaws, which is comparatively rare among reptiles. Dimorphodon had a large bulky skull approximately 23 centimeters in length, whose weight was reduced by large openings separated from each other by thin bony partitions. Dimorphodon had an advanced jaw musculature specialized for a snap and hold method of feeding. The jaw could close extremely quickly, but with relatively little force or tooth penetration. This along with the short and high skull and longer pointed front teeth suggests that Dimorphodon was an insectivore, though it may have occasionally eaten small vertebrates and carrion as well. In game, thank in game, thanks to its original paleontological description, Dimorphodon has a large damage even for its comparatively small size. Next we have the Diplocolus. Now Diplocolus or Diplocolus meaning double call is an extinct genus of Lepospondyl amphibians which lived from the late Carboniferous to Permian periods of North America and Africa that is before the age of the dinosaurs. Diplocolus are by far the largest and most well known of the Lepospondyls characterized by a distinctive boomerang shaped skull, this one. Diplocolus had a stocky salamander like body but was relatively large reaching up to 1 meter in length. The most distinctive feature of this genus and its close relatives were a pair of long protrusions or horns at the rear of its skulls. It has been proposed that the, tab the tabular horns acted as a hydrofoil, allowing the animal to more easily control how water flows over its head. This would have allowed the animal to rise in the water column of a river or stream quite quickly and easily. Next we have one of the most famous dinosaurs, oh sorry, it's not a dinosaur, one of the most famous marine reptiles called ichthyosaurs. Ichthyosaurus literally stands for fish lizard 
is a genus of ichthyosaurs which are large extinct marine reptiles from the late Triassic and early Jurassic of Europe that is Belgium, England, Germany and Switzerland and Asia that is Indonesia. It is among the best known ichthyosaur genera as it is the type genus of the order Ichthyosauria. Now Ichthyosaurus was smaller than most of its relatives with individuals measuring up to 3.3 meter in length. Mm, Ichthyosaurus in game looks very much like a dolphin and had similar behavior in real life also. In fact, Ichthyosaurs were viviparous that is they bore live young instead of laying eggs. Now Ichthyosaurus belongs to the family called Ichthyosauria which also consisted of the Triassic Shoniosaurus popularis which was 15 meters long and the Shastasaurus sicaniensis, which was estimated to have been 21 meters long which would make it the Shastasaurus which would make Shastasaurus the largest reptile to have ever existed in any water. In fact it would be larger than even a megalodon. Ichthyosaurus like this one they used to eat mostly cephalopods, fishes and sometimes even smaller ichthyosaurs. Next we have the Caprosuchus. Now Caprosuchus is an extinct genus of Mahajanga Sukit crocodiliform. It is known from a single nearly complete skull collected from the upper Cretaceous Ekhar formation of Niger around 95 million years ago. Caprosuchus literally means boar crocodile in reference to its unusually large caniform teeth which resembles those of a boar. They were around 6 meters in length and now Caprosuchus is thought to have been a primarily if not exclusively terrestrial predator. Evidence for this behavior includes the positioning of the orbits you know, laterally and somewhat anteriorly, see it from here, which suggests an overlap in vision. This is unlike many other Neosuchians including extant crocodilians in which the orbits are positioned dorsally as an adaptation to aquatic predation where the head can be held underwater while the eyes remain above the surface. Okay. Next we have the Lyopleurodon. Lyopleurodon means smooth sided teeth. It is, it is a genus of large carnivorous marine reptiles belonging to the Pliosauridae which is the clade of short-necked plesiosaurs. The two species of Lyopleurodon lived from the middle to late Jurassic period between 166 and 155 million years ago. It was the apex predator of the middle to late Jurassic seas that covered Europe. The largest species, Lyopleurodon ferox, is estimated to have grown up to 6.4 meters in length. Four strong paddle-like limbs suggest that Lyopleurodon was a powerful swimmer. Its four flipper mo wait, let me show you here. Its four <coughs> let me <coughs> take a bit of breath. So its four flipper mode of propulsion is characteristic of all plesiosaurs. A study involving a swimming robot has demonstrated that although this form of propulsion is not especially efficient, it provides a very good acceleration, a desirable trait in an ambush predator. If you have seen any of the documentaries from BBC or the other ones, you will find that Lyopleurodon and most of the pliosaurs used to stalk prey from down below and then used to rush and capture the prey high above and then swim back up using its fast acceleration for movement. Next we have the Megalania. Yes, this is a very important creature actually. It may have been, it may be practically useless in the game, but it is a very important creature. Why? Now, Megalania refers to an extinct giant goanna or monitor lizard, recognized as either Megalania prisa or Varanus prisus. They were part of the megafaunal assemblage that inhabited southern Australia during the Pleistocene. The length of the largest individual stood at 7 meters with a maximum weight of approximately 600 to 620 kilos. Thus, Megalania was actually bigger than even saltwater crocodiles. Now, Megalonia is the largest terrestrial lizard known to have existed. Judging from its size, it would have fed mostly upon medium to large sized animals including any of the giant marsupials such as Riptodon along with other reptiles and small mammals as well as birds and their eggs and chicks. 
it had heavily built limbs it had heavily <clears throat> so it had heavily built limbs and body and a large skull complete with a small crest between the eyes and a jaw full of serrated blade like teeth like other varanid lizards such as the komodo dragon and the nile monitor megalania possess to toxin secreting oral glands the venom in these lizards have been shown to be a hemotoxin this means that the venom would act as an anticoagulant and would greatly increase the bleeding the prey received from its wounds this would rapidly decrease the prey's blood pressure and lead to systematic shock systemic shock being a member of the anguimorpha megalenia may have been venomous and if so would be the largest venomous vertebrate known to have ever existed next we have the mosasaurus yes i have a lot to say about this guy because it is one of my favorite creatures of all time now megas mosasaurus half many meaning the lizard of the meuse river is the type genus of the mosasaurs an extinct group of aquatic squamate reptiles the genus lived from about 82 to 66 million years ago during the campanian and maastrichtian stages of the late cretaceous Traditional interpretations have estimated the maximum length of Mosasaurus to be up to 17.6 meters, making it one of the largest Mosasaur genera of all time. Its skull, which was either broad or slender depending on the species, was equipped with robust jaws capable of swinging back and forth and strong muscles capable of powerful bites using dozens of large teeth designed for cutting prey. Mosasaurus was a predator that had excellent vision to compensate for its poor sense of smell and a high metabolic rate that suggests it was warm-blooded an adaptation found in other mosasaurs but unique among squamates fossil evidence suggests that mosasaurus inhabited much of the atlantic ocean and the seaways adjacent to it continents that have recovered mosasaurus fossils include north america south america europe africa western asia and antarctica This distribution encompassed a wide range of oceanic climates including tropical, subtropical, temperate and subpolar climates. Now this Mosasaurus was a common large predator in these oceans and a dominant genus positioned at the top of the food chain. Yes, it was an apex predator. Its diet would include virtually anything. It likely preyed on bony fish, sharks, cephalopods, birds, and other marine reptiles including sea turtles and other mosasaurs it likely preferred to hunt in open water near the surface just like sperm whales mosasaurus faced competition with other large predatory mosasaurs such as prognathodon and tylosaurus which are known to feed on similar prey though they were able to coexist in the same ecosystem through niche part partitioning There were conflicts among them as an attack on Mosasaurus by Tylosaurus has been documented in fossils. Next we have the Plesiosaurus. The Plesiosaurus is an entire family. The reptile that you see here belongs to an Elasmosaurus. Now Elasmosaurus is a genus of plesiosaur that lived in North America during the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous period about 80.5 million years ago. Measuring 10.3 meters or 34 feet long, Elasmosaurus would have had a streamlined body with paddle-like limbs, a short tail, a small head, and an extremely long neck. The neck alone was around 7.1 meter or 23 feet long. Elasmosaurids were fully adapted to life in the ocean with streamlined bodies and long paddles that indicate they were active swimmers. The unusual body structure of Elasmosaurids would have limited the speed in which they could swim, and their paddles may have moved in a manner similar to the movement of oars rowing, and due to this could not twist and were thus held rigidly. Plesiosaurs were even believed to have been able to maintain a constant and high body temperature called homeothermy, allowing for sustained swimming. Their long, slender teeth. were adapted for seizing prey and not tearing hence elasmosaurids most certainly swallowed their prey whole they fed on fishes and were itself fed upon by chronosaurus which is a giant plyosaur 
next we have the pteranodon okay so pteranodon means toothless wing it is a genus of pterosaurs that included some of the largest known flying reptiles with wingspans over 7 meters to 23 feet they lived during the late cretaceous geological period of north america in present day kansas alabama nebraska wyoming and south dakota the wingspan of an average adult male pteranodon was 5.6 meters or 18 feet unlike other pterosaurs such as rhamphorhynchus and pterodactylus pteranodon had toothless beaks yes this description here is incorrect they actually had no tooth similar to those of birds pteranodon beaks were made of solid bony margins that projected from the base of the jaws the beaks were long slender and ended in thin sharp points the upper jaw which was longer than the lower jaw was curved upwards projecting okay <laughs> we take a bit of breath they were curved upwards now the most distinctive characteristic of pteranodon is its cranial crest this crest consisted of skull bones projecting upward and backward from the skull the size and shape okay the size and shape of these crests varied due to a number of factors including age sex and species the crests were probably mainly display structures we check from here like this now the wing shape of pteranodon suggests that they were okay the wing shape of pteranodon suggests that it would have flown like a modern day albatross using a flight pattern called dynamic soaring which exploits the vertical gradient of wind speed near the ocean surface to travel long distances without flapping and without the aid of thermals and thanks to their toothless beaks and this general structure they mostly fed on fishes and invertebrates okay now we come to quetzalcoatlus quetzalcoatlus northropi is a pterosaur known from the late cretaceous of north america from 68 to 66 million years ago and one of the biggest known flying animals of all time it is a member of the family azadarkide a family of advanced toothless pterosaurs with unusually long stiffened necks its name comes from the aztec feathered serpent god quetzalcoatl modern studies estimate this reptile had a minimum wingspan of 11 meters 36 feet generalized height in a bipedal stance based on its wingspan would have been at least 3 meter at the shoulder and its estimated weight would be around 200 to 250 kg skull material shows that quetzalcoatlus had a very sharp and pointed beak they were most likely terrestrial stalkers similar to modern day storks and probably hunted small vertebrates on land or in small streams okay next we have the sarco or the sarcosuchus sarcosuchus stands for flesh crocodile it is an extinct genus of crocodiliform and distant relative of living crocodilians that lived during the early cretaceous from the late howterivian to the early albian that is 113 to 112 million years ago of what is now africa and south america it was one of the largest crocodile like reptiles reaching an average estimate of 9 meters and 3.5 tons but estimated to grow up to 9.5 meters in body length and weighing up to 4.3 tons making it at least 50% larger than any of our saltwater crocodiles It is known from two species the Sarcosuchus imperator from Niger and the Sarcosuchus hardy from northeast Brazil. It had somewhat telescoping eyes. Let me show you the eyes. Can I disable the UI? Okay. So like this. So it had somewhat telescope eyes and a long snout comprising 75% of the length of the skull. The there were 35 teeth in each side of the upper jaw while in the lower jaw there were 31 teeth on each side the upper jaw was also notably noticeably longer than the lower ones leaving a gap between them when the jaws were shut creating an overbite like some crocodiles now the largest known skull of a sarcosuchus imperator is 1.6 meters long and it was estimated that the individual it belonged to 
had a total body length of 11.65 meters with a weight of 8 tons that will be twice that of any saltwater crocodile now sarcosuchus imperator had a generalized diet similar to that of the nile crocodile which would have included large terrestrial prey such as abundant dinosaurs that live in the same region so even an apex predator like say a sucomimus would not venture close to the river if it find the sarcosuchus imperator nearby because even those guys were not safe from a sarco next we have the tapehara well it means the old bean it is a genus of brazilian pterosaur from the cretaceous period from the santana formation dating to about 112 million years ago tapehara it's not called tapejara its pronunciation is tapehara tapehara crests consisted of a semicircular crest over the snout and a bony prong which extended back behind the head which can be used for mating display as well as for making sounds next we have the thorny dragon now thorny dragon in the game is a mythical creature but it is actually from a real life reptile so i will not be show i will not be explaining to you the thorny dragon from game but the thorny dragon from real life so the thorny devil or malloc horridus also commonly known as the mountain devil thorny lizard thorny dragon and malloc is a species of lizard in the family agamidae the species is endemic to australia it is the sole species in the genus malloc and grows to up to 21 cm in total length including the tail with females being larger than males generally the thorny devil also features a spiny false head on the back of its neck it's not found in this model anyway so this thorny devil had a false head on the back of its neck and the lizard presents this to potential predators by tipping its real head the false head is made of soft tissues now the thorny devil is a, is a, was like a small lizard it mainly used to subsist on ants often eating thousands of ants in one day the most important thing about the thorny lizard is the thorny devil collects moisture in the dry desert by the condensation of dew this dew forms on its skin in the early morning as it begins to warm outside then the dew is channeled to its mouth in hygroscopic grooves between its spines during rainfall capillary action allows the thorny devil to absorb water from all over its body capillary action also allows the thorny devil to absorb water from damp sand absorption through sand is the thorny devil's main source of water intake so even though the game creature is not that important in real life the thorny devil is a very interesting creature to look at and observe next we have is the titanoboa now Titanoboa means titanic boa. It is an extinct genus of very large snakes that lived in what is now La Guajira in northeastern Colombia. They could grow up to 12.8 meter or 42 feet long and reach a weight of 2500 pounds or 1135 kilo. Fossils of Titanoboa have been found in the Carrejon formation and date to around 58 to 60 million years ago. The giant snake lived during the middle to late Paleocene epoch, a 10 million year period immediately following the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. Now, there's something interesting about this guy. While initially thought to have been an apex predator of the Paleocene ecosystem in which it lived, analysis of the cranial elements of Titanoboa possess unique features relative to other boids. This has pointed to the genus being dominantly piscivorous that is it fed on fishes a trait unique to titanoboa among all boids so titanoboa is a boa it belongs to the same family as anaconda but is not related to python but even though it was very large it still used to feed on fishes and it did not have a frill in real life and it also was not venomous boas are not venomous only cobras you know vipers and sea snakes are generally venomous lastly we have the tropiognathus introduced in the crystal isles dlc tropiognathus means keel jaw 
is a genus of large pterosaurs from the late early Cretaceous of South America. This genus is considered to be a member of the Ornithocaridae, a diverse group of pterosaurs known for their keel tipped snouts and large size. Shopiognathus is regarded as the largest pterosaur found in the southern hemisphere, only rivaled by the huge Azadarchids, like Quetzalcoatlus. The type and only species is Tropiognathus mesembrinus. Fossil remains of Tropiognathus have been recovered from the Romualdo formation in northern Brazil. Now, this Tropiognathus was very large. It is known to have reached wingspans of about 8.2 meters or 27 feet. Anyway, well, that was my entire reptile and amphibian exhibit. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot of paleontological information from it. Now, in the next video, I will be showing you all the, I think the next one is all of the fishes or the birds. I don't remember. I think the next one are the birds. So yeah, till then, stay tuned and thank you for enjoying.